Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather for this Thursday evening, May 8th. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from weatherist.com, your commander of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather. A lot to talk about here, um, a pretty active pattern, and we're getting some new information about the European uh, summer climate models, which are coming in and also some rather interesting looking uh, sea surface temperature maps. This is one I wanted to show you right off the bat. This is May 7th. And as you can see here, um, we the, this is a, 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 um, a pretty in interesting looking map for a number of different reasons. Let me call up a marker here so you can see it. So um, I'm gonna change the color here for a minute and then I'll go like this, there you go. So this here is the PMM, the Pacific uh, Meridial Mode, a very, lot of cold water here. It's, and you can see that the ENSO region is beginning to turn pretty cold here, right along the equator. The cold water is beginning to push its way southward here. And if that trend continues, we could end up, I mentioned this last week, last couple of weeks, we could end up with a weak La Nina for the middle of summer. That's not what the models are forecasting, but this pool of cold water is quite pronounced, as you can see, and it dominates much of the Eastern Pacific. And what that does is that favors keeping the mean trough on the California coast, and that ends up producing a ridge in the Midwest areas for the later on the summer. And that's one of the reasons why the climate models returns much hotter and drier here uh, in the Midwest states and the plains and the Canadian prairies for the summer. The new European climate model clearly shows that. Now, um, in the Atlantic, we have a lot of cold water off the coast of Africa. Uh, and this is a negative AMM. And you can see here, the last several years, we've had a lot of warm water off the African coast, where we, but that's not what we're seeing right now. Now this could change, but this is an important feature because it's kind of keeping the tropical Atlantic a little on the cool side. Overall, the Atlantic Basin is cool as it has been in several years. Um, so that's, uh, we'll have to see if that trend continues. And the other feature here is now, of course, there are some warm pockets in the Gulf of Mexico, the Southern Caribbean. Uh, but the other point is in the Northeast Atlantic, that's where the warm water is. And that's affecting the spring and potentially the summer, therefore the upcoming uh, season in Europe and the European grain markets and, and Black Sea, uh, Ukraine, Western Russia, and the Europe grain market. A lot of this warm water is anchoring a lot of ridge and uh, blocking patterns Western Europe. And their rainfall amounts have been way, way down here for April and May. And in, just in case you're wondering, uh, this here is the North Atlantic if we blow it up. And again, you can see as of uh, May 7th, how cold the eastern half of the Atlantic is, and then how warm. Look at that pool of warm water there in the Northeast Atlantic, off the coast of Spain and France and Ireland and Great Britain. And that's causing that constant blocking pattern and rigidness in uh, Europe, which is affecting their pattern. Okay, now for those of you who are unfamiliar, of course, this here is the website, in case you haven't been to it. And if you go to the website, you can see the shop page here. We have a lot of different products with the offer. This here is the Mid-Atlantic Forecast, which is very useful. It's only $35 a month, and you get a week two forecast and some maps and some data. I have a lot of landscapers and painters, construction companies, some vineyards that use this as well. And it covers my particular area, which is mainly uh, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina. Uh, this here is the Weather Risk Grains Twitter page for my agricultural clients. And then this here is the uh, Blue Sky page. Okay, so... Um, now we've talked about the PMM here before, and this is just a schematic of what the PMM does. This is the warm phase. This is a positive phase. Clearly, we are in the, uh, uh, the negative phase right now. This is a positive. We are clearly right here in the cold phase, and uh, it definitely Im impacts the climate here. It ends up producing La Nina-like conditions. All right, so now this here is the uh, upper air map from a couple of days ago. This was May 5, and like I mentioned earlier, this is we've talked about this map a couple of times here. I posted it on the Facebook page and on the Blue Sky page and on the Grain page. Huge upper low here, two of them actually, excuse me, four of them. Upper low in the Gulf of Alaska, another one south of Greenland, another one, and this is the upper low. It's formed in the mid-Atlantic last weekend and drifted west or retrograded into the Ohio Valley. And then the California one, which moved into Arizona, New Mexico. Now, this system continued to linger only recently pulled out of here. And this upper low brought significant rain a couple of days ago into the lower plains. And this, uh, the remainder of the system is now moving into uh, the uh, Delta region and the Tennessee Valley. So that's just where we were a couple of days ago. This is the latest surface map Thursday afternoon evening. You can see the uh, front here, low pressure area right along the front, and there's your showers and thunderstorms. So this is going to provide some rain. This low is going to develop into a rain, a little bit of a rain event 
here for Friday afternoon and evening from Virginia up into New England. Um, uh, that's not a surprise, that's his forecast. And in case you're wondering, this has been the rainfall for the past seven days. Now, again, the southern states here, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, have done very well. Uh, that brown color, in case you're wondering, this dark red is three inches, and this brown color is six inch rains. They also had some good rains in Tennessee, Kentucky, up in Ohio and Pennsylvania, New York, and they needed up in here. It's been kind of dry. And the, but the rains in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia in the last week have not been very good. They've been okay in Virginia, North Carolina, a lot of gaps in the coverage, also in southern New Jersey. Okay. Uh, the other point I want to bring out is the long-term conditions. Here is the AMM, the Atmospheric Angular Momentum. It's a measure of how fast the atmosphere rotates around the Earth. Remember, the Earth has its own rotation, and the atmosphere spins around the Earth. Now, the movement of the atmosphere around the Earth is impacted by things like uh, the surface of the Earth and um, also by uh, the mountains, mountain torque. Uh, and, of course, what happens is that when you have uh, the atmosphere speeding up, uh, for a number of different reasons, um, wave breaks, the MJO, what have you, uh, then you get a positive AMM, and then a slower atmosphere, a negative. And that's where we are right now. We've been this way since March. Uh, we've been consistently negative here. It's actually decreasing, continuing to get more negative. And negative AAM, is, we don't get a lot of big swings of the atmosphere. You don't see a lot of massive troughs plunging southward or big ridges pushing northward. It's kind of a, a repeating stable weather pattern. Now, that can mean that if you're in a rainy pattern, you're going to get a lot more rain. If you're in a dry pattern, you're going to get stay dry. But in terms of the pattern amplifying, we don't see a lot of that when you have a negative AAM. And the MJO is not helping. One of the ways to get this feature to change, to get this AAM to go positive, is to get the MJO to wake up. And as you can see, European GFS the next 30 days, it's stuck in the neutral circle right through uh, until the middle of June, June 7th and June 8th. All right, this here is the surface map. Let's go back to more operational weather here for a minute. This here is the surface map for June 7th. There's the cold front coming through. Oh, let me bring this forward. Oh, oops, no, let me bring this forward. There we go. Um, bring front. I don't know why it's not doing this. Okay. Uh, so there's your low pressure area right here developing on the front. And uh, the second low down here in Louisiana. And so the Ohio Valley looks pretty good on Friday, the Great Lakes. But there's your rainstorm. Here, most of the big rains are going to probably be northern Virginia up into New England. Uh, but there'll be some in central and southern Virginia, North Carolina, and there's not a lot. Okay, so then what happens <coughs> is um, we, this upper low uh, kind of re-energizes, and we have a second upper low over Pennsylvania uh, Friday evening. And uh, that causes this low pressure area to really intensify so that we end up getting a pretty good low here in New England, uh, by early Saturday morning. That, but the southern low is still there. See what's hanging back over Texas, Louisiana? And there's your ridge in the Rockies. So this is going to be another feature here to watch out down the road. Okay. And then this here is the Saturday evening map. There's our southern low. And it's hanging back. The northern one is gone. A New England here Saturday evening. High pressure builds down from the Great Lakes and eastern Canada. That's very nice. But here's this southern low. And that's the next big event coming up this week. Now, this is the upper air map here for Sunday night into Monday morning. So let's take a look at this for one second. Let me put that out of the way. There's our giant upper low. It looks quite impressive. This is a three or four contour upper low in Louisiana, the delta. There's your ridge to the north. Right? You have a trough in southeast Canada, another one on the west coast of North America. So this low is going to, as this trough comes in, it's going to push this upper low to the northeast very slowly. And that's going to be a pretty significant rain producing event. This here is the surface map, as you can see, valid for Sunday night into Monday. There's, now notice, notice the high pressures over Pennsylvania. So you end up going and getting a very sharp cutoff here between sunny, cloudy rain, very sharp very tight gradient here between that. So initially on Sunday, this looks spectacular. Nice high pressure in the it looks fabulous. Midwest, Great Lakes, everybody nice. Uh, the west of the mountains, nice Saturday and nice Sunday. And then along the coast, once the rain ends on Saturday morning, the high pressure comes in, so Sunday looks really great. Okay, so now here comes our trough into the western United States, pushing the thing 
this upper low, this monster thing, uh, to the northeast. So now it comes out of Louisiana. It's now in Tennessee and Georgia. And high pressure's off the coast, and the low's coming out of Alabama. So notice the southeast winds here, driving copious amounts of moisture into the southeast as the rain shield expands to the north. <coughs> this is Monday evening. By uh, Tuesday evening, we have heavy rain has moved through the Carolinas and Virginia, moving into Maryland and Pennsylvania and Delaware and New Jersey eventually. The low is in eastern Tennessee, uh, near the Georgia border, as you can see. Uh, but it's like a pretty big rain event. This looks like a big deal. And then as it lifts further to the north, the western trough comes in stronger, as you can see right here. Right? And this actually forms an upper low here in the, uh, Idaho. It gets some rain in Montana, the Dakotas. But this trough is now on the coast, and there's the low in Maryland moving to Pennsylvania, driving the rain. Pretty good circulation here of rain across most of the mid-Atlantic region, and even a little bit into um, Ohio and Kentucky. Now, this is uh, not May 5, excuse me, that's not right at all. This is uh, May uh, 14th. There you go. I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, okay, let's look, at the, let's look at the rainfall. This is the next four days ending at um, 8 a.m., um, on um, May 12th. And you can see the significant rain here to over the south, all right? Now, this rain is from this weekend in New England. As you can see, it's a pretty good rain event, one to two, one to three inches in here. That's pretty nice rain. And they need that in New England. They've been very dry. But there's the southern event right here. And now, that's for the next four days. For the next seven days, this is the total rainfall. Look at that. So there are areas in the Carolinas and Georgia, and again, North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina has had a lot of dry conditions here, so this is much needed rain. Um, and they're going to get widespread three to six inch rains, maybe even some higher amounts closer to eight. And then also one to three inches into Virginia and then up into New England. Okay, now what happens after this? Well, this is May 16, 17. So the western trough continues to advance eastward across the northern, uh, northern states along the U.S. Canada border. It drives a weak front here through through. Uh, the Midwest towards the East Coast. The East Coast system is finally gone, but there's another trough coming in behind it. So this one and then this one. And as we look at further down the road, this is May 19th or 20th. So we end up getting a really significant trough here moving in from the Rockies into the Plain States, and that produces strong low pressure on May 18th in Kansas and Nebraska, where it's been very, very dry, and Iowa. Now, this has the potential to be a significant severe weather event for the Central Plains and the Midwest. The low tracks up into Michigan, and again, that's a very nice, over the top of the ridge, so you have strong uh, uh, convergence to law of confluence, and uh, this has a potential to be a significant severe weather event here for the middle of May, May 19th to 20th. And finally, I just want to point out, uh, actually, not quite finally, and then finally, this is May 22nd. So the trough now is in uh, the eastern U.S. As you can see, there's a strong block in, in Hudson's Bay, Canada, and Labrador, okay? And more energy is coming down from the Gulf of Alaska. So this is a very active pattern, a very active pattern here for the Midwest and really for the East Coast for that matter. The other point I want to point out here is this. Uh, this is the um, European sea surface temperature maps for the Atlantic Basin. So in the upper left, we have July, then we have August on the upper right, and the bottom, we have September. And look how cool the Atlantic Basin is. Now, this is the first time in several years we've seen normal sea surface temperature anomalies in the eastern Atlantic, and mostly of the main development region, the MDR. All the really warm water to the north is up to the north here. You can see that off of, off of Western Europe again, all three months. Okay, a little bit off the East Coast, but the subtropical and tropical Atlantic does not look particularly warm. And this is the first time in several years we've had what appears to be a normal Atlantic region. So that might be a reason to tamper or to um, play down some of the uh, hurricane seasonal forecasts. Now, this is still May, and we still have, you know, 60 days before we get to the heart of the hurricane season. So, you know, we're have a ways to go yet. Maybe this can change. But right now, the Atlantic doesn't look that warm compared to what we've seen for the last several years. We'll see. Okay, this is meteorologist at DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on uh, the Blue Sky Weather Risk page and on the Facebook page and on the website.